Hey, what's up guys? Let's start understanding some core concepts of GraphQL. To start learning GraphQL is really very easy. Unlike, let's say MySQL or Postgres, where you need a lot of installation on your desktop or you know, on your machine rather, GraphQL for some reason, I found it to be quite easy to get started with because I was able to find a lot of playgrounds where I could basically write queries and get data and understand what's happening when I make certain kinds of requests. So the question is, what is a playground? Well, if you have some experience with MySQL or Postgres or even Mongo, you would know that each of these database applications come with their admin interface. MySQL, for example, has phpMyAdmin, Postgres has pgAdmin, and Mongo has its own. GraphQL has its own admin interface, so as to say, actually not an admin interface, but an interface through which you can query data, through which you can look at what is coming, what you are sending, right? That is your way of interacting with what is the underlying application. So it's the GUI which allows you to look at what kind of data is available and what is the type of query which you are making. So let's try to look at some of the demo applications or rather some of the demo playgrounds which are available to us. And also I will play around with some of them to give you an idea of what you know, kind of data we are expecting. So this is one of the three sample playgrounds which I have been able to find on the internet. So if you look at the interface, first of all, one is GraphQL demo me.io. I think this is a very popular GraphQL Udemy course who has created this stuff. There is something called Rick and Morty API. I think there is a series about this. Unfortunately, I haven't seen it, so I don't have too much information, but it seems there is some information around it posted as GraphQL data. And one of my favorite is a shop API from Venger, which is demo.venger.io shops API. And most of the stuff which we will be doing is on this API because I am quite familiar with it and I feel that there is a good amount of data with enough relationships for us to work with. So if you look at the playground, you can initially see that there is this URL. Of course, you can change it to even your localhost URL from any application and you should be able to connect to it. It is not limited to any you know, external API, so as to say, you know, you can have a localhost URL and then use the same interface, not a problem. But believe me, if you have installed a GraphQL client, you will typically get this playground. So this is as far as, you know, the URL is concerned, there is a prettify, there is the option to see the history. Obviously we haven't fired any GraphQL query, so we have no history about it. We can use the copy curl option to get the curl out uh, query which we can run on the terminal we will see that later but then comes the most important pieces of this application which is the left hand side where we write our query and then with this play button we see the output so this is our playground this is the place where we write our queries or the mutations any way for us to interact with the graphql api and this is where we see the output so in a very layman way, I can say this is your PHP MyAdmin where this is your query area and this is the table where you will see the data. Although there is some fundamental difference between how PHP MyAdmin shows the data and how Playground. But yeah, generally making a comparison. Okay, then if you would have seen these two little tabs over here, this is one of the great things of GraphQL it allows you to look at what kind of data we have. So for example, if we click over here, I can see what are the different queries which I can write, some of the mutations which are available, so on and so forth. Okay, it even gives me a, a schema which is available with this store. So I can see 
a lot of details which is available to me in this GraphQL API. You know, what are the different kinds of data? So for example, let's just say as a simple thing, because this is a graph API, why is it not coming up? Hmm. Come on. Okay. For some reason, it's not happening. So let's just say we have one query, which is products. Let's click on that. So it's type products. It can take arguments of this nature, but what we can see is it is a paginated list and it has a return type where it will return an array of product. Okay. And then if I click on that, I can see it returns type product implements node and it has these basic options which is it has id created add updated add language code stuff like that correct and this is the json structure which we are expecting so immediately i would say you know when you look at this document as a front-end developer you know what is coming towards your way what is being you know what you are expecting the server to spit out for you to consume so this is very helpful Okay, and I feel this definitely helps in the development uh, and makes it quite fast. For example, if we look at Rick and Morty, I can quickly go to the docs and see, okay, what are the different kinds of queries which are available? Okay, there is character, there is characters, characters by ID, location, locations, okay, plurals. We can get locations by ID the episode itself episodes and then get episode by id right so it gives me a clear indication what are the different kinds of queries which are possible what i can do what not and same goes for this unfortunately this doesn't have docs but it has schema it has schema which says there are users posts post me hello these are some basic stuff right so this is a general overview of how we can start interacting with graphql when we are you know when we have opened our playground now there is one more very simple ui for playground i think i have seen it somewhere let me see yes this kind of a thing um if you click on learn somewhere down below i think you will get that let me see fields i could see that somewhere i remember is it this particular place it has loaded everything but i still don't get that play button i don't know what is happening um okay arguments fragments hmm maybe not i don't know so there is some some simple ui as well which we get it's another way version of playground a little simple but i feel this is quite interesting um you know it has a better ui and i like this kind of an approach so yes i would suggest you follow along you look at these um you know apis or rather these playgrounds and get familiar with a little bit with these data points and then in the subsequent videos we are going to start exploring these playgrounds primarily the venture one and understand how we can use graphql to consume these apis so yeah that's about it guys i know so far we are talking a little more on the basics and fundamentals but bear with me in the subsequent videos we are going to jump in right into making queries getting the data and stuff like that but before that i wanted to handle a little bit of basics so that when we are you know working with very uh, hands-on queries you don't feel out of place if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel